Wally's strapline is 20 years ahead, and you can see exactly why. This is the new Wally Power 50, and I am going to show you a complete tour of everything on this boat. It is one of the most exquisite craft on display at the Dusseldorf Boat Show. It is fresh out of the factory. This is the very first one, and we are going to show you everything there is to see. My name is Hugo Andre. You're watching Motorboat and Yachting. Let's go and tour it. We're going to start the tour with a proper look at the exterior because styling is at the core of every Wally. Now, they were one of the very first companies to adopt the vertical bow. You can see it, see it here on full display. And in order to make that possible, they also created the very first anchor system that comes out through the hull. It pops out, extends out and drops the anchor, all so that they can have that perfectly clean lines. And the lines on this are truly spectacular absolutely cutting edge there's not an inch out of place there are no guardrails to spoil those exquisite lines it's got that very geometric angular hard top and beautiful clean lines now one thing i did want to point out you'll notice that there are no hull windows on this craft but if you look very carefully you can see a little circular camera in there and you'll see why that is in a minute when we go inside now it has these almost shark gill style air inlets for the engine intake. We've got folding balconies on both sides. And then a large fixed teak bathing platform. Now it is powered by twin Volvo IPS 650 engines. They're 480 horsepower each, give a top speed of around 36 knots, but they are going to do an outboard powered Wally Power X version with quadruple 500 horsepower mercury outboards for a top speed of over 50 knots. Now prices for this model start at around 1.5 million euros ex tax. Obviously by the time you spec it up a bit and add tax that's going to be a fair chunk more but it is absolutely exquisite and you can see where that money has gone. And one of the things to point out if you notice this teak decking Although it's genuine teak, it's not made from original teak. It is, in fact, reconstituted. So these very fine little slithers of teak all compress together to create a really lovely look. And of course, because it's made out of very thin slithers or offcuts, it's actually much more sustainable than raw natural teak. But it also looks really cool. As you'd expect, we've got beautiful pop-up cleats, really solid lightweight little Wally logo etched into it. These are for the uh, canopy poles so you can have a shade strung up over these two sunbeds. Now this is a core part of the design on the Power 50. We've got twin sunbeds each side with a big walkway down the middle. They're cut away a little bit under here and that is because they are mounted on the engine hatch and this whole aft section lifts up to reveal the engines. Now you can see on this one, we've got the headrests pushed all the way back there. So you've got a lovely angled sunbed. On this one, it's been pushed forward. So it also creates the backrest when you're sitting facing in this direction. So it's very simple. You can see the track, it just slides along there to create a sunbed that looks like that. I'm not gonna do it for you because it's also beautifully arranged with special cushions and scatter cushions in exactly the right place. Now look at this, so really, cool geometric hard top design. This is all carbon fiber too to keep the weight as light as possible up top. The helm, uh, the uh, hull itself is uh, a more traditional composite vacuum infused but the key bits that need to be light like the hard top, like the chairs, the table, they are all carbon fiber. And this is absolutely exquisite. They've got a special matte non-slip finish on the table. So you can see the actual weave of the carbon fiber material under there and listen to it. 
That is absolutely lightweight, pure carbon fiber. But I love that matte finish. Looks very, very cool. And of course, it's less slippery. Wraparound seating on both sides. That table obviously opens up and folds open. I'm not going to do that again because it's all laid out with special props and so on. Got a chaise long effect on this side. We've got a fridge under here. Hence the reason for these air vents. Another thing to point out is if you lift these cushions, you can see there are air conditioning outlets tucked in between. So even though it is an open boat, you can have air conditioning within this hard top section. So it's all nice and cool, even on in hot weather. Now I mentioned those fold down balconies. Again, that was one of Wally's very early innovations. You can see the controls for that here. I'm not gonna do it here in the show. I don't even know if it's set up, but that's what it looks like with the bulwark up in its upright position. You can see the teak on there. And over on this side, we've got it folded out so you can see how much extra space it creates. And the lovely thing about it is when you're lying on those sun pads, to have that completely open all around you, the other one down, the platform, you're just on a little teak island in the middle of a beautiful bay it's not hard to imagine exactly how lovely that is going to be. Now it has, it's kind of the crossover point between the Wally Tender range and the Wally Power range. So it's still a full walk around design. We've got good sized bulwarks on the side to give a bit of protection. They don't want the guardrails that would spoil the look. So they make sure that it's nice and deep. You can see it's just about knee height on me. Look at the detailing on this hardtop. They really do know how to do it well. And now that they're part of the Ferretti group, it's also beautifully built and finished. So there is not a speck of dust or an inch out of place on anything. Looks like we've got some very neat integrated navigation lights. And then this iconic Wally windscreen. Single piece windscreen, there is a split line running up the middle of it that just where the angle changes from one side to the other but it is all molded single piece screen and these huge carbon fiber windscreen wipers absolutely enormous to sweep that glass clean an inset sunbed right up here in the bow you can see i say inset because there is a little sort of tow rail on either side just to make it feel nice and secure and access to that anchor system that I showed you earlier. I might just see if we can have a quick peek in there just to demonstrate how that works. If we lift that up, and I'm not sure I'm gonna, oh, there we go. So you can see the anchor system in there and that projects out beyond that vertical bow so that the anchor drops clear and doesn't scratch that beautiful paintwork. And this is a bespoke Wally color. They first used it on the Wally Power 118 the largest and most spectacular of their boats and since been used on the Wally Y150, but it's a metallic kind of pearlescent gray green color. Super cool. Cup holders, little recess for putting phones or so on. But that is the look that you really want to see. That iconic angular wheelhouse with single piece screen. There's a cutaway section underneath it so it's almost like it's floating just above deck level with inset lighting underneath it. Super cool. Let's come back into the cockpit. Now moving forward another iconic piece of Wally design are these two helm seats. You'll see them on every Wally power boat split down the middle you can put your hand through there all carbon fiber back molding poltrona frau trimming on the front really beautiful piece of design really tall too look how tall that is that's pretty much almost head height so that's very nearly six feet off the deck equally cool from the front side there's that split down the middle bolsters that flip up and these 
sides grip you around the waist and really lock you in place. And for the first time in a while, there is a brand new wheel design as well. So full carbon fiber wheel. This is gonna be the new design of Wally wheels for all future power boats. Very small diameter, very sporty. It's the kind of thing you'd find on a hypercar, like a McLaren or a Ferrari. Very light, very chunky, very small diameter. Feels superb with that little Wally insignia printed on the top. Dashboard, all carbon fiber too, or at least these two elements here. Standard Volvo throttles, there's not much you can do to get away from that. Because it's an IPS drive, you have got joystick control, so you can put it exactly where you want to, spin it on the spot with those two pivoting pod drive systems. The computer works out exactly where they need to be to move you sideways or backwards or wherever you want. Very nice, clear design for all the key controls, all the lights, all the anchor system. Bow thruster controls, so the separate bow thruster, wipers for those huge wipers we saw earlier on this side, and searchlight, full control of a searchlight. All electronic access to all the dials, the information you need. Obviously, you can change those screens, you can have it how you want, whether you want the chart plotter, the engine information, radar, whatever, you can change that to suit your preferred setup. Over on this side, there's a kind of mini wet bar arrangement. There is a small sink under there. You can have a grill set into this spot here. There is another fridge under here. A little bit of storage space. And I believe, oh, no, maybe not. I, no, I think the ice maker is in here. There we go, there's an ice maker too. So you've got the fridge, you've got the ice maker, and there's also a galley downstairs, but always nice to have a wet bar in the cockpit. And then, well, let's just have a quick admire of that windscreen. You can see what I mean by a single piece design. There is no central mullion. The split in the screen, that's very remarkable, remarkable because from outside you can see there is, it looks almost like a curved kink down the middle of it, but from inside there's no distortion at all. It's absolutely perfect vision. I bet you that is a supremely expensive piece of molding. You can see the air conditioning outlets at the base of the screen there and here, so should stay nice and cool even when you've got the sun overhead. Talking of overhead, there are a couple of opening hatches in here. If you want a bit of extra airflow, you can just lift those up and because they're angled slightly forward, it'll actually catch the air and funnel it down through the hard top. So you can go for natural ventilation or air conditioning. Side screens here, that's all glass and in there. So really good protection. When you're flying along at 35, 36 knots, this whole back end should be very nicely protected from the breeze. It's only those two sun pads at the back which are gonna get a little breezy. Let's move down into the accommodation. What a surprise, carbon fiber staircase, of course. Carbon fiber floor even. Look at that. Just immaculate. Open plan downstairs. It's not a long-term cruising boat, more like a very luxurious weekender. Big bed in the bow area. And this is why I showed you that camera in the hull, because believe it or not, that is not a window. That is a live television feed of what's going on outside. So not that beautiful when you're inside the Dusseldorf Boat Show, but imagine if you're anchored up in a bay, you've got a camera relaying exactly the view that you would get if it were glass. But being Wally, they didn't want the structural issues of having a glass window, nor the interruption to those beautiful clear lines. So they've just gone for a solid, unbroken top sides and a tiny camera relaying the view to a television screen kind of smoked mirror at the head of the bed, exactly the same on that side. We're right up against the wall, so all you can see on that screen is a picture of the wall. And overhead, we've got three glass hatches letting in lots of natural light. Now, everything is really cleverly concealed. So although this just looks like a beautiful piece of fabric and carbon fiber, 
they do lift up. There is storage behind all of those. There's no visible latches. It's all beautifully concealed. But there is storage all the way around there. There is storage behind these mirrors. I'll just pop that, opens up. Full row of soft closed drawers. Exquisitely engineered. They all open and close on soft touch, so you just push them gently back. They glide slowly back into place. Same again on that side, just a hanging locker for shirts and so on. And over on this side too, I believe. The standard of finish in here is extraordinary. It's really hard to show that on camera, but every single element of it, and it's really hard with carbon fiber, it's a difficult material to work with. But all these joins, absolutely exquisitely done. There's no overlap or dust. Little trays like that inset just to put your valuables. Recessed lighting under here. Beautiful cream fabrics. Teak finish, that looks like more of that reconstituted teak. Beautiful curved surfaces. This really does feel like a no expense spared boat. And a lot of people say that, but it doesn't always come across in the end result. But here, it really does. Now this is, well, technically I suppose it's a galley. It's pretty minimalist. You're not gonna be doing uh, a seven course me meal on here. There is a little microwave under there. There is a fridge. There's a cocktail set. That's, that's more typical. That's more the kind of thing I can imagine happening on this boat than cooking up a lavish roast dinner. More storage in here. These stairs do lift up. I think this is the one area where carbon fiber, of course, light as you like. Little bit of basic storage in there. Looks like it's being used for boat show storage at the moment, but I'm sure that'll be rather more neatly finished in future. And then the heads compartment, equally high spec, sort of Corian effect, one piece sink, beautiful matte black tap, concealed toilet. But you know what? If I had a pure carbon fiber toilet, like that one, I think I want that on display. I don't want to hide that under a teak top. I want everybody to see I've got a carbon fiber loo. There is a pull out shower in there. So it is a full wet room. And quite cleverly, they have put that in a separate compartment. So there is a glass door that swings round. You can keep that separate so that if you do have a shower in there, all the damp stays in there. And then you've got a nice dry sink and mirror. Well, there you go. That is their latest model. I said right at the beginning that their design or their logo is 20 years ahead. And I have to say, looking at this boat, it feels that way. But more than anything, it's not just the aggressive styling. It's the beautiful fit and finish that really do it for me. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look around this boat. It is a very rare opportunity. It is the very first one the factory has produced and it has been a real privilege to take a look. Do let me know what you make of the boat in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next one.